guys, my name is Mariah and I'm the founder of MariahAltoff.com and the creator of Ditch the Degree Design School, which is an online course where I help aspiring graphic designers learn the tools and resources they need to turn graphic design into their career. So today I want to talk to you all about how to download, install, and organize your fonts. Before we share my screen and get into all of it, I first want to talk really fast about licenses. So this is something that I did not even know existed or mattered when I first started designing. But if you are using fonts for your business, your client's business, any type of commercial use, you need a commercial use license. And a lot of free fonts online only have a free for personal use license. And if you used a personal use font for your business, that is illegal in copyright and you can't do that. So, um, a few tips for finding commercial free licenses. I'm actually going to link below my favorite affordable font um, marketplace so that you can use that link. They have all of their fonts and all of their design resources actually are commercial free so you can use them for your business or your clients projects as well. Um, and then finding free commercial free fonts. I like to just use Adobe Typekit. So Adobe Typekit actually comes with your Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, and it's really easy to just install the fonts into your system. So let me share my screen and we can talk about how to install both Adobe Typekit fonts and then just external fonts that you bought or purchased or found on the internet. Okay, so let's start with downloading and installing fonts from Adobe Typekit. So to get on this website, you actually just go to fonts.adobe.com. I'll link that below as well. And you can either just, you can search for a specific font, you can browse fonts, you can find font packs, you can even find web fonts on here. So we're just gonna browse fonts and see what comes up. And say I wanted to install Quiche Sans. So you can go to view family and all you have to do to get these fonts onto your Adobe software is just click toggle this button that says activate 14 fonts. Press OK and you're done. You can also just toggle the individual ones if you only wanted maybe the black font or whatever. You can just toggle one of the other. So super easy to do. You can also, if you want to preview what the text looks like before you download it, you can type it in here. You can adjust the font size and it'll show you what it looks like in all the different font weights. So that's a handy tip as well. If you were downloading a font from a different website somewhere else on the internet, here's how you would install that font onto your computer. So it's going to come into your downloads folder, wherever that is on your computer. I'm on a Mac, so mine's just right here and it's going to be a zip file. So go ahead and just click on that zip file. It's going to open a little folder. Then sometimes it'll have two different options, OTF or TTF. I like to use the OTF fonts. If you have that option, I recommend that it doesn't really matter. Then you'll highlight all of these double click and you'll click these buttons that just say install font and it's gonna pop up, install font, install font, and install font. Oh, I don't know if I got that last one. There we go. So now if we go into Illustrator, we'll be able to find the font we just downloaded. Let's, oopsies. I did not hold down shift when I size that up. So we just downloaded Silver South. Here's the script version. It's so pretty. And the serif version. So super easy to do. So that's all there is to it. Now let's talk about how do you find and organize your fonts. This is also something I didn't realize existed for way too long. Um, I learned that if you go into your character panel, if it's not showing up right here, you can go to window type character and it'll pop up like its own separate window. If you go to this drop down menu, you can actually filter your fonts and this is a really good way to organize fonts. First and foremost, you can add like you can favorite your favorite fonts. I actually don't think I've 
done that. Okay, Montserrat, I use that font all the time, so that makes sense. Um, but you can filter your fonts by going to this little funnel icon, and you can choose, say you were looking specifically for a sans serif font, which are the fonts without the little feet at the end of the letter forms, you can go to this button and it's going to show you all of your sans serif fonts in your library. Obviously I have a trillion because these are my favorite fonts to use. <laughs> um, but you can do that, clear all, you can do that with your script fonts. Here's all of my script fonts that I own. You can filter by weight. So if you wanted to find specifically bold fonts, you can choose heavyweight, regular weight, lightweight. So let's choose heavyweight to find bold fonts. And you can see what all of those looks like. So this is a really good way to just preview everything. Again, too, if you want to see what the text is going to look like before you do that, you can actually change it to say whatever you want, and it'll give you new sample text. You can even do the selected text, so it'll actually change the preview text over here to what text you have selected in your screen. So that's a really good way also to just make sure you actually want to use that font. Um, another option too is if you wanted, let's clear that, if you wanted like a really skinny tall font, you could do this condensed width. It'll show you all of those. So you get the picture. It's a really good way to do that. Say you wanted to favorite a font. Um, for example, I use Black Diamond all the time for my brand. It's probably my favorite font ever. You'll have it selected and then you're just going to go find this little star icon, click on it, and now it's going to show up in your favorites. So that's a really good way to organize your font library as you keep growing your font library, which I recommend you do because it really helps your designs. Um, Again, I'll link below my favorite places to buy those for cheap. <laughs> um, it's going to get really overwhelming to sift through all of them. So this is a really good way to just keep them organized and find what you're actually looking for quickly and easily. So that's all I have for you today. If you're interested in learning more from me, I actually have a free training for you as well. It's called how to become a professional graphic designer without a design degree. I'd love for you to sign up and watch that. I'll link that below as well. It's for anybody who's learning graphic design, aspiring graphic designer, or is a graphic designer and just wants to improve their skills. So let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next lesson.